What up, players? Warboss Tay up in this mode. Today we're going to be painting up a giant cannon for the Ogre Iron Blasters. And as you can see, I already started um, uh, a while back. I think back when I was filming this video the first time and I got it to, um, the skeleton brown base coat. Then I realized the seam was just so ugly down the middle. You can still even see it at the back of the cannon a little. So I tried to go back over it with some uh, liquid green stuff. But basically all I did was just a Calvin Brown undercoat for the whole thing. Some of it is in silver, but you know, there's not enough of it in silver to make it much of a big difference. The rest of it is going to be in dwarf bronze and, and the tin bits and all that kind of stuff. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go back over and paint everything back with this uh, Calvin Brown. When you're doing such a big piece like this, you really want to pick up or be um, looking out for when you get to paint in the details, what those details are going to be. Um, so I can already see like some of the fine, oh my goodness, stupid paint pot won't stay open. I can already see some of the, um, you know, looking at the designs, how how much fun it's going to be to paint some of, some of this. It's cool that it's all molded on, so you don't just have like a very plain, you know, like Empire Cannon where if they had a giant honkin' cannon like this, without the design, but the cannon was this big, it would be, you know, most people wouldn't, would just paint it in silver and not do any kind of freehand or anything on it, so I like that they went the extra mile to design things that you're probably never going to see because once the thing is on the field off the painting table there's not really much way that you can see it other than by picking it up and holding it up to look at that's that's what we all want right as a painter that's kind of what you want you want you want to take your models out when you go to the gaming club and you want your opponent across this table to be like dang son let me see that and then pick it up and admire it and ask you how did you do this how did you do that what how did you what what is this how did you paint that and that's when you say well just head over to youtube.com backslash warboss tay for all your painting needs no i'm just kidding you don't have to do that that's like the moment of pride for me is always it's it's the moments of pride are always when you know, people ask me how I did something and and you're able to share what you know and hopefully learn something in return. So, all you have to do is let this dry for a little while and then we'll come back and we'll start painting on the uh, next color, which is actually going to be dwarf bronze. So get your dwarf bronze ready because when we get back, that's where we're going to pick up. <laughs> I'm not going to say what it looks like. Okay, so now we're going to start adding on the dwarf bronze and uh, you want a decently nicely big sized brush to cover this whole surface area. I'm going to add a little bit of water to the brush head before we get started and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold it from the tip of the barrel and then paint from the back to the front. You'll notice that some of these, uh, you'll see some of these like plates, metal plates, I guess they're supposed to be. We're gonna paint those in in silver with bolt gun metal later. So we're just gonna try to ignore that for now. If you manage to get some dwarf bronze on it, then that's, that's fine. Like this plate over here, this plate over here. Um, don't worry if you get any any silver, uh, any dwarf bronze paint on it because we'll clean that up in a little bit. I 
I love all this detail and symbols and stuff carved onto the into the cannon. I think it looks really cool. <coughs> I've been getting some requests to review the uh, new paint line when it comes out. I'm not gonna buy like the new mega paint set. I just think it's way too much and you're probably not going to be needing a lot of the colors and needing some some pots like more than one so it doesn't make sense to spend so much money when you could get the pots that you really are going to be using. Um, specifically what I'm thinking about is the washes, the new known black which is I guess <coughs> the new badass black, the known oil color I can see a lot of people stocking up on those so I'm, I'm not going to go out and get them uh, get the huge paint set because I'm gonna pick and choose what I would rather have in my army or in my collection uh, but I do know one color that I'm gonna get thanks to the people who've pointed it out because I hadn't seen it until you mentioned it in your comments and your uh, some private messages is a color they were coming out with called War Boss Green. So I am really stoked to to add that to my collection. <laughs> it's so nice of you, Games Workshop, to name a color after me. I know I do all these videos to promote your models, but you shouldn't have. That was really nice of you. Nah, I know. My videos have nothing to do with them making new colors, but <laughs> it's just pretty cool. Alright, so I can stop rambling now because this first base color is just about done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it dry, then I'm going to paint the, uh, the front of the barrel here. I can't actually get inside though. side here. Um, I'll let the rest of the cannon dry, then we'll, we'll paint the front and then we'll add on the silver. So get your bolt gun metal ready, because that's going to be the color we'll be using in the next part of this video. Okay, so now we're going to get started painting the silver, and I've got my trusty chain mail. Starting with chain mail instead of bolt gun metal, actually, because I think that it's going to be... Um, a little bit better for when we tone the colors down with the better black wash in just a second. Um, since this is one of the focal points, the cannon is one of the focal points of the model, um, I don't want the, the metal to look too rusted, or too, uh, what's the word, faded. So we're painting the metal silver onto these plates on the front of the cannon. And you just wanna be careful that you don't get any of the paint, any of that pigment onto the cannon itself. These are like some uh, repairs that the ogres put onto improvements, custom, custom improvements to make the Sky Titans cannons. Uh, to, I guess to keep them together since maybe they were falling apart or to give them a little bit of extra armor or maybe where there was some misfire before to patch up a hole but I like how the iron blaster cannon itself looks just so big and um, monstrous I remember when it first came out and people were talking about how how devastating the cannon looked and, and played on the field and um, I think these uh, extra little bits added onto it, like the iron plates, the hooks, the chains that the ogres have added onto the side, just really reinforce that. Makes it look really nice. So I just want to say thank you to all my viewers. This is a 
this has been a huge project this iron blaster one has taken me the longest out of any project so far and I think it has something to do with the fact that there's just so many different pieces to paint on the the whole model you know you've got the driver the wagon you try to paint it all in one go like back when I tried to paint my um, corpse cart then it probably would have taken a lot more steps um, it just seems like it would have taken more time to get get through everything and to make sure you don't paint over something you've already painted with all the detail that came on this kit like the um, all the barrels, the wheels, the things on the wagon that you don't even notice the first time you're looking at it. It's, uh, I think it's really a good idea that you really break it down and see how many different components go into painting up this phenomenally detailed kit. So besides these plates, these silver plates, like I said, we're also going to be painting some of the things that are hanging off of it, like the uh, chains on the side. There are hooks. There's um, like a look like giant meat hooks or fish hooks here on the side by the back. We're not going to paint the the comet. The comet we're going to leave, but we are going to paint this hanging silver hook and. The iron rings, we're going to make them look silver. Um, yeah, I'll leave that the way that is for now. I hear these new paint pots can also be kept open rather than like these current ones that just kind of want to stay shut. So that'll be a good help too. I can't wait to get my hands on the new some, some new paints from the new range. Um, I hope my local store stocks up on them because I think when it comes out it's going to be a big, big, huge deal. A lot of people are getting back into the, the painting side of the hobby here in Honolulu. So I want to make sure I'm, I'm there on release day. Just like before, we're looking from the top. Getting the iron rings. You've got this little dangly, um, looks like a pennant or something, a uh, piece of stone. I think it's painted gray on the Ogre, Oop. on the Games Workshop website. So I'm gonna paint it in my Hawk Turquoise Crystal kind of color scheme. That's the same thing that I do for the Savage Orcs. Yeah, stay open. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but there we go. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to paint up the, uh, I mean with the silver, last thing we're going to do with this chainmail paint is we're going to paint up the um, artillery inside the cannon, all these cannonballs and stuff that got stuffed into the barrel. It's going to get in there with your brush and kind of stab at it in the different angles. There we go. So there you have it. This is all the silver. I'm going to let it dry and uh, come back. When we come back, the next paint you're going to need is Bada Black and um, Hawk Turquoise. We'll do Hawk Turquoise first. We'll paint the paint this little hanging totem thing and then we'll get onto the wash. Alright, we're on to our last part of this video with the Bad Ab Black. I took the liberty to just paint in Hawk Turquoise to the two little uh, hanging things there just because um, there's no need to sit through you know a minute of me painting that. So I'm just gonna take my Bad Ab Black and just go from top to bottom. With this though, because this is the wash that's going to um, potentially pool where we don't want it to, I'm actually going to go over the entire, one entire area before I move on to the next one. 
so, so I'm gonna hit everything that I want to on the back. I'm not gonna let it pool because um, it can leave stains and watermarks if we uh, if we let it pool and then come back later and try to try to spread it around. We don't want it to pool in one area because we don't want it to dry like that. But we do want to hit all of this evenly. I love how Bad Eye Black immediately gives um, dwarf bronze a very old and corroded look to it. Oh, there goes the dog. Well, oh, this won't take that long. So we're just working our way down from the back to the front. Sorry about that, maybe he saw like a cat or something. And when you get down to here, to the main body of the cannon where you've got a lot of these, um, a lot of these, all these recessed areas with the, with the, the, the little hieroglyphics and the scenes on them. You just want to make sure that the wash spreads pretty evenly and it doesn't pool in one area. It's because there's so much recessed areas that you don't want it to you don't want it to be uneven while you're painting it on. So I just use a huge dollop right there, but then I'm spreading it down to these other two little murals, I guess you would call them. And notice how the um, the bad at black going onto the chainmail has a much nicer finish uh, than onto it's just straight bolt gun metal would make it <coughs> would make it pretty dulled down. So onto chainmail, which is a naturally brighter color and um, lighter pigment, it's makes a makes a really nice finish with the bad at black which is kind of what you want on such a showpiece model I think this sit and then I'm gonna hit the front uh, once that is dry but I'm just gonna throw some bad at black onto the front now and inside and I'm gonna let this sit for a while and dry and then I'll come back and when it's dry I'll, I'll hit the the rest of the rim of the cannon and then we'll go into the highlighting of the cannon 